Hi there. Welcome back. So, how you been? Well, good, good. Today, we're going to talk about Joanna the Goanna. No, 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 no. That's Joanna the Spencer Monitor. Today, we're going to talk about Joanna the Mangrove Monitor, Ferranus Indicus. We're going to talk about husbandry, proper care, the taming process, and proper diet. I'm Marty, and this is 221B Reptiles. Today we're going to talk about Joanna the Mangrove Monitor, Varanus Indicus. Joanna is part of the Mangrove Monitor family. The Mangrove Monitor complex includes species such as the Yellow Quince Monitor, the Blue Tail Monitor, the Peach Throated Monitor, the Spiny Neck Monitor, the Tricolor Mangrove Monitor, and I'm sure I forgot a few. Described in 1802 by the French zoologist François-Marie Dodin, Varanus indicus, or the mangrove monitor, can be found in Northern Australia, Indonesia, New Guinea, Papua New Guinea, and Asia. Varanus indicus was also introduced on smaller islands in the Pacific in order to control invasive species such as rats, rabbits, and toads. These are medium-sized monitors. They do enjoy climbing, digging, and swimming. Females will usually measure between two and a half and three and a half feet long, and males between three and a half and four and a half feet long. If you decide to keep one of these beautiful lizards at home, remember that it is a commitment. You need to know that mangrove monitors are very strong, smart, and agile monitors. This lizard can live up to 20 years of age and will require a very, very spacious enclosure. Most people start with a baby lizard that they can keep in a 20 or in a 30 gallon glass enclosure until four or six months of age. Then they will have to choose a bigger size enclosure. You can either get a medium size enclosure or get a giant custom made enclosure. I currently keep Joanna in an Exoterra tank. The tank is 36 by 36 by 18 and Joanna is almost 10 months old it is time for her to get a new enclosure. But uh, that's for another episode. The tank was originally arranged with a water feature and climbing areas. I had to change the water two to three times a week and I had to clean the water pump at least twice a week. The tank also contained live plants such as pothos, spider plants, bromeliad and coleus. Needless to say that Joanna destroyed everything within a week. You need to remember that these are very, very powerful animals. And they have very, very sharp nails. Eventually, I decided to rearrange the tank and provide more climbing areas and more digging areas. As for the substrate, I used the bioactive substrate recipe that you can watch in the previous episode. The water feature, and in this case I use a plastic tub, is cleaned every day. I also keep in there a bonsai, and I believe it's a pachypodium or something, and this is a very, very strong plant, and Joanna hasn't destroyed it yet, so we'll see how long it's going to take. 
When keeping reptiles, it is very important to watch their health, but also their behavior. As soon as I made these changes in her terrarium, Joanna started to bask a lot more and she also started to gain confidence. Remember that mangrove monitors are from very warm and very humid areas. I try to keep Joanna's tank between 70 and 80 percent humidity. As for the temperature gradient, she has a cool area that is between 70 and 75 degrees. The ambient temperature in the tank is between 75 and 85 degrees and I like to provide a basking area that is at least 115 degrees. In order to keep more humidity in the tank, I chose to cover the top of the enclosure with duct tape. The light had to be placed somewhere and I had to place the lamp inside the tank. Now this is not a good recommendation at all. I watch Joanna, I watch her behavior, and she is not getting in contact with the light. Now if Crazy Dragon is trying to climb on the light or is trying to get close to the bulb, I will definitely have to change it. Either put a cage around the lamp or modify the top of the terrarium. In an enclosure like this, you really have to make sure that you have a proper basking area and you will also provide a cool area. You will need to clean the water daily and clean the branches and climbing areas at least once a week. Hopefully your monitor will relieve itself in the water and by changing the water every day you will make sure that the tank is clean. Remember that I use a bioactive substrate. This also has to be clean. The bugs are going to take care of any misplaced waste, but you still have to make sure that the soil is clean. In the wild, Varanus endicus will feed on fish, crustaceans, lizards, small mammals, eggs, sometimes birds, and amphibians. The key to a proper monitor diet is variety. Until a couple of months ago, I used to feed Joanna every day. Now that she is 10 months old, I have switched to feeding her every other day. I will propose Joanna Dubia roaches, pinkies, shrimps, fish, chicken, and hard-boiled eggs. And now, let's talk about the taming process. Mangrove monitors are by nature very, very shy and very, very discreet animals. Now, I have a theory. Mangrove monitors are a lot like cats. The more you try to grab them, the more they try to run away from you. So your best bet is to wait for the animal to come to you, naturally. Four things you need to remember when trying to approach, handle, or tame a Varanus indicus. Number one, it's a relationship. Number two, you have to be patient. Number three, you have to be passionate. And number four, you have to be persistent. What you want to do is make sure that every interaction is a positive interaction. This is going to take time, but the animal needs to feel comfortable. The animal needs to feel at home. It needs to recognize you, it needs to hear you, and you need to announce yourself properly. If I can give you a few tips when it comes to taming a mangrove monitor is that first you need to work on the surrounding. What I mean by that is that you have to make sure that the animal can see what's going on outside the tank without feeling fear. What I do is when Joanna is out basking and literally watching me, I start to either clean the room or I like to play music or I'll just stare at her and just talk to her. Then what I do, anytime I have to feed the animal or clean the tank, I announce my presence. I'll try to make eye contact with the animal, I will talk to her and open the door very, very slowly, 
and I do not want to spook the animal. I do not want her to jump off her basking surface. I want her to look at me, clean the tank, without doing anything. That's what I call the presentation. Eventually, the animal will be comfortable enough that you can approach and maybe try to touch the animal. Feel free to bribe the animal with its favorite treats. And after a few months or a few years of positive interaction, the lizard will come to you. I really, really want to thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on this video, like the video, share the video, make sure you subscribe to our channel, and I will see you very soon for another episode of 221B Reptiles.